What is up everybody? I am Bill with Honest Open Permaculture, Hop Farm. I haven't given you guys much updates on the different garden beds, so let's just do one big update. When a good name for this video would be Growing Amongst the Weeds. So the one we're standing in front of right now is the wife's garden. If you remember, I did a video about a month and a half, maybe two months ago on this, showing you guys a no-till method with cardboard and compost. Let's jump into this one and show you what we got going on. All right, here on this side of it, we have a bunch of flowers, marigolds. Definitely helps keep some of the pests away. At the front, right beside the marigolds, we did have zucchini plants. We did get quite a few zucchinis off of it. Right behind it, we've got some green bean plants. The bugs are loving the green plant, green bean plants too. Look, we got some green beans down there. Some green beans under here. Over here we had some cooler weather stuff. We had some collards. They're all done for. Here's our little bed that's in here. And in here we have some carrots and we tried a sweet potato vine in here. Here's a sweet potato vine going crazy. We've got some carrots in here that are doing awesome. Right behind the carrots, we've got our cucumber plants. They started running up that bed post. They're starting to take over in here too. Look, we got actually a little cucumber popping up in here. Behind the cucumbers, we got a little bit of corn. And corn's doing okay. We have some ears on the corn. I think this stalk right here and this stalk right here is actually a rainbow corn. We'll see when it's ready. Not a bad little patch right here. That one looks about ready, huh, y'all? Let's, let's see, let's see, hold on. Oh, yeah. Take this out. Hold on one second. Let's see, let's see, let's peel this back. We'll get a little look-see and see if it's, see if it's corn. Oh, it's corn in there, all right. Ooh-wee. Kernels all the way to the top. That's when you know it's ready. All right. So we have to get in here today and pick off some more corn that are ready before the worms like to get to them. Look, we got the cucumber starting to run up the corns too. So that was the no-till garden that I showed you guys, AKA the wife's garden. Got us a nice ear of corn that we can have tonight. Now let's go down to the halfway garden that we call it. Call it the halfway garden because it's about halfway down the property. <laughs> okay, here's the halfway garden and a great example of what I meant earlier about growing amongst the weeds. We are amongst weeds that are six foot, some of them seven foot tall, and right at the edge of those weeds, we got a garden bed here. At the beginning of the season, the beginning of the spring and summer, we had a bunch of cool weather crops, greens. We had a bunch of lettuces in here. All you can see now pretty much is carrots. If you remember, we interplanted these carrots with turnips and radishes. The turnips and radishes are all pretty much gone. Now we're just down to carrots. Right behind those carrots, we do have a few more, like here's a, here's a pepper plant. And then we have some tomato plants. Here's a tomato plant. It's gonna be crawling up these weeds. There's a fence back here in these weeds. We're gonna be, oh, like that one right here. Boom, see it right there? And there's another one. We'll step in right here. Actually got some little tomatoes on there. This is where I planted all my cherry tomatoes. See, we have cherry tomatoes amongst the weeds. Right in there. That one looks delicious. We're gonna eat this one right here. Yummy. Mmm. Juicy. Full of flavor. Delicious. Let's see what else we got in here. A few more tomatoes down in there. And pretty much just carrots. We did have onions all along just the outside. We've already harvested all those, they're inside. Let's pull a carrot for you. Oh, 
That's not a carrot. That's an old turnip. Chicken food. There's a good looking carrot. Oh man, look at that one. Let's go grab our corn. Carrot and corn. All right, so that's what we have going in the halfway garden is carrots and a few cherry tomatoes and a few pepper plants. We will be replanting soon in there, right behind the carrots, some more leafy greens, some more lettuces, some kales, that sort of thing. Since the weather's starting to turn, the peak of summer has passed us. Now it's going to start going down and getting a little colder. Perfect time to start going and planting some more leafy greens. Now we need to go to the backfield, way back there, and see what else we got growing. Here's my backfield gardens. The biggest growing area. Let's start you down here at the southeast edge where we have it tarped at the moment, getting ready for a good fall and winter planting. Now this is my first time using tarps, my first year. Never used them before. I've always used some sort of deep mulch, whether it be grass clippings, whether it be leaves, whether it be wood chips um, on top, you know, on top of cardboard. So I'm trying it a little bit different this time. I can use these tarps over and over and over again. If I'm bringing hay or grass clippings, something like that into my garden to smother out the weeds, I have figured out that while me, while I am smothering out weeds, I'm also bringing in more weed seeds, AKA the unwanted plant in my garden. That's all the weed is, right? So we're tarping this up front. We're going to do a bunch of leafy greens. We're gonna do a fall crop, winter crop of carrots, probably some more radishes through the fall and winter, and definitely spinach. We wanna do a bunch of spinach and try to freeze that up because we all know spinach is high in protein, high in iron. You can make some great baby food out of spinach. So I wanna get a bunch of spinach planted in here so when Baby Hop Farm comes, he'll have some awesome greens throughout the winter. So let's move it on over. Right here was my row of kale, blue curly kale and some dino kale and also radishes. The grass and weeds have taken it over. This is the next row that's going to get flipped. Everything needs to be chopped down, cut, and then tarped. This is what I was waiting on. Hold on, let's see. Yes. You see these right here, this little pod? That little pod right there, that is a radish pod. Let me see if I can open it, show you what's inside. So I let my radish go to pod and then what's inside the pod should be radish seeds. So I'm trying to, oh yeah. Let me see if I can get you real close. Radish seeds are very, very small. Can you see that really tiny seed right there in between my fingers? That's a radish seed. I'm gonna be planting my own radish seed next year. How exciting is that? Sweet! Yep, so that's gonna be our next project. We'll chop everything down. We'll feed it to our chickens at the beginning of the chicken compost system, let them eat whatever they want, compost the rest, harvest the radish seed. Next over is our squash area. We have a bunch of squashes running, different kinds of squash. A few zucchini squash, a few winter squash, um, a, wow, I can't remember the variety. It's a really big squash with a, with a really big neck. I might have to go grab my, uh, my seeds and look at it. I don't remember the name of that squash. It's going to kill me. But here's our squash patch right in here. Next, we are killing off a row that had some weeds in it with this tarp here. And on the other side, we have beans. We're starting to put up our hoops because We've had problems with our beans. This is like my fourth planting of green beans this year, guys. The deer and the bunny have absolutely just killed my green beans every single time. So I put netting up, I'm gonna put row covers up, and then cover them as well. Because we want, we eat a bunch of green beans in my house, and they're great to can. You can can green beans and have them ready for you for years. So I wanna get a nice big crop. I got three rows, this row, this row, in this row, three rows each in each row. So we got nine rows, 50 foot long. We can get a bunch of green beans out of this as long as the freaking bunnies stay away. So boom, that's what we're doing here. And this is a great example of what the tarp does. See right beside it over here, how green it is over there. Grass right there and weeds. That's what this whole thing used to look like. 
And then we tarped it up, came through, pulled out all the grass real quick and weeds, put the grass and weeds in the walking path to help smother out any other grass and weeds. Boom, planted our beans. Now we've got another squash area here, right in front of the tomatoes. We did a, a squash area. We've harvested most of it. These are starting to die back. These were patty pan squash, a few winter squash. We had our first year of choke cherries. Now these are supposed to be a sour, tart cherry. Let me try one for you. Let me explain it while I'm tasting it. This is the first year I've ever had these before. And uh, to be honest, they didn't taste like much to me. I'm letting them ripen a little bit more. Definitely tart. A little bitter. But not bad. Not bad at all. And a uh, poop hits the fan start situation. Definitely good, edible. High in antioxidants. Definitely something they'll get eaten. So those two right there, those are choke cherries, AKA the Aronia berry. Right next door, we have a few blueberries. We got a blueberry here, blueberry here, blueberry here, blueberry here. Amongst where the squash was. We go a little bit further. We got some cantaloupe. We got a baby cantaloupe coming in right here. Here's a cantaloupe vine. Here's another melon. There's another melon. We've got quite a few melons over here. One down there, one over here, one over here. So a good amount of cantaloupe melons. Look over here, look at this vine. I have no idea what it is. No clue. It's been growing for like three months now and has yet to put off a flower. I uh, just let it go. Last year in this spot, I did put cantaloupe, watermelons, some squashes also, things like butternut squash. So I know it's one of them. I just don't know which one. It's taking over everything, but not putting off flowers. Back there behind it was the disappointing potato patch that we got like 15 pounds of potatoes when I wanted, uh, you know, 300 pounds. I live and I learn, but I definitely know what not to do with my potatoes now. Good job, Bill. All right, oh, carry on, carry on, carry on. Back here to the tomatoes. I've been working in the tomato area for the past few days, doing a lot of weeding. During the heat of the summer, I've had so much planted that I can just kind of harvest, harvest, harvest. And then I really don't have time to do a lot of weeding. But as the summer tries to cool off, I can come in here take a few hours a day and start weeding everything out, which brings it all back to life pretty much. So the weeds are gonna be sitting here sucking dry all the nutrients out of the ground. So if I can pull all the weeds that are around these tomatoes and just stack them in a pile, look, I got three big piles of weeds right back there. Just let them compost in place. Now, all these tomato plants don't have any competition. They can suck up all the nutrients and have a nice burst of growth towards the end of the summer going into fall. We got some cayenne peppers. All sorts of tomatoes in here, guys. Oh, we even got peppers growing amongst the tomatoes. Maters. What we'll be working on today, look, this is what it all looked like beforehand. Look at all these weeds growing most of the way up. It's like a jungle back here. So we'll be tying up a lot of tomatoes that aren't on the trellis. We got so many tomatoes in here. Just ready to explode. Everywhere. And as soon as I clean up all this competition, they're going to explode even more. 
where we are picking tomatoes on a daily basis. Some delicious Cherokee purple tomatoes. A bunch of heirloom varieties. These are looking delicious down here. Back here behind the tomatoes, we have cucumbers and they are almost done. Well, I can bring them back to life if I wanted to, just like the tomatoes. I'll need to do a lot of weeding. Look, let me show you. See how yellow it is, dying back. But if you look really close, there's a lot of green, a lot of dark green in here, a lot of vibrant green in here, and more flowers. See, this is the leader. We can bring this plant back to life and let it thrive again by doing a little bit of trimming on the plant and some weeding. Oh, we missed one. Look at this cucumber back here, all fat and juicy. We're gonna have to get that. Let's go ahead. Oh, fumbo! Let's go around and get that. All right, here's a cucumber. Same thing on this side. We have a lot of leaves dying back, a lot of yellowing, but that's okay. It made it through the heat of the summer, made it through the drought of the summer. We have a slight drought in the, in the middle of our summers, but it's starting to turn around and we're getting a lot more rain again. So I'll come in here, trim out all these weeds, grass on the bottom part, open it up on the bottom part, and then trim off the dead stuff up top and leave the leader to keep growing. Now I am gonna have to run some electricity out here, a, a drop cord from the house way up there, just so the bunnies learn, because bunnies can fit through these holes. But when the bunny gets their wet little nose up against these fence and it gets shocked, gets hit with 8,000 volts, it's gonna learn not to come near this fence anymore. So I got one more spot I wanna show you. It's the no-till watermelon patch. Now if you guys are interested in seeing the no-till wife's garden, I'm gonna leave that video down in the description. I'm also gonna leave this no-till watermelon patch, that video down in the description. I'm gonna leave all my stuff from the backfield down in the description. So once you're done with this video, go down in the description and choose you another video. I would love for you to stick with me and do a little binge watching. Why not, right? Okay, so we made it to the watermelon patch. It's not as good as I was hoped. We're gonna show you the good, bad, and the ugly here, right? This is honest, open permaculture. I'm gonna be honest and open with what's going on here, even if it's a little embarrassing. Hey, it is what it is, right? Here's the no-till watermelon patch. We started off, you see this green strip right in the middle? That was the only part exposed to ground. All this other stuff has cardboard and deep mulch, which was grass clippings at the time. And then we planted our watermelons, our watermelons in that open ground that is now full of weeds. We had some bunnies come in here and eat almost every single leaf off of the watermelons. And we've gotten three watermelons so far. This is what a lot of them are doing right here, just splitting right open. But the ones that I found have been working the best are these sugar baby watermelons. Like this right here. This one is pretty much done. That one, we got another one here. That one's almost done. We had a few more down here, if I remember correctly. Yep, there's another little sugar baby watermelon right here. But all of my long watermelons, like this one, they all busted. So you guys, you don't have to have a weed-free garden to be growing a lot of food. You do have to have a little bit of handle on your weeds and knowing when to take them out so your plants can take off again. If you guys like this video, please smash that thumbs up. It really helps us. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing that. And when you do, hit that bell notification. It'll let you guys know every time we put a video out. Later.